Hello, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Uh, at the conclusion of the last episode, we did get a little bit of science and I'll be going in to spend that in just a bit. The other thing we have going, also last episode, you saw me partially building and testing the Spacely One. That's our little Sputnik light rocket that's going to be attempting our first object into orbit and we'll be seeing that later in this episode it's going to take a little over eight days to build we also have another striker sounding rocket for high altitude telemetry and science gathering that's going to be coming up very very shortly but before we do that uh a kind viewer left a comment to me. I actually learn as much more probably from people's comments than I do from anything else. Is um, These are actually a combination of two comments. One is my issue that you saw before with uh, my Juno and the monoprop mysteriously coming back into the cockpit of, uh, well it's not that mysterious. I want the monoprop not to be there. It's not necessary, but it's not that mysterious that it's showing up because I'm refurbishing it and refilling the tanks and I didn't turn off that tank so I should turn off that tank and then somebody else brought up the point wait a second you know if you go into here and notice that there is what seven days seven days three hours about 38 minutes to build this thing if I go into here and hit edit I always figured this was just going to rebuild the whole thing and click into the time but actually it really doesn't if you're gonna do simple edits this is the way to do it so this is my one that's being built right now I've added monoprop you'll probably be seeing this a little bit later and the are not monoprop I'm sorry a goo container got monoprop on the brain but I have the monoprop I don't want in here and to keep it from being in there we're gonna turn that off actually might as well turn off the shielding too I want to keep that at zero and the thing to notice is is that really didn't change too much in the how much time it's going to take to keep building it because these were very minor edits i have to assume if you started doing major edits that this time's going to start going up but now what i can do is i can just save these edits and the construction that was already done is not being lost so if we go back up here in the space plane hangar it's still about eight percent built it's still about the same amount of time left but now I have those edits in there the way I like it so that's a nice feature to have okay let's get into research and development do I want SAS capability on my probes or which actually would be nice or an RCS too I think I'm gonna go for fairings I think I'm gonna go for fairings uh, one is to get that. Another is I'm going to pick up wings. Um, we'll build a better plane at some point, but the swept wing. Swept wing type A is a great wing. I love that wing. Uh, might be too big for the current Juno, but, you know, in the future, who knows. But that gives me a couple of extra build points too. Uh, upgrades. I don't think the tech... No, I'm happy with how quick that is. I don't need it in the space plane hangar. Well, you know what? Maybe in the future we'll be building some bigger plane. What what do we got happening in the space plane hangar here? Yeah, let's put one in the space plane hangar just for the future. Don't need it right now. And another one into the vehicle assembly building. That should be a good one. Other than that, I think we are... Let's get to the striker. Now, I have made... Functionally, my KOS script is exactly the same, but I have made some adaptations to it. I've cleaned up the code a little bit, and uh, I think you'll... I, I want to show that to you. Okay, let's open up the KOS terminal. Get that ready. We will also start up our experiments. Again, these have already been queued. You know, I should have gone into... While I was in research and development I should have looked what got gathered last time and all this thing does is gather from the high atmosphere and it did quite a lot last time I really don't know though how much more it has left to do but I guess we're going to find out Okay, uh, let's, 
uh, let's see, we'll copy the program over. So copy uh, path. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting all my, I can do this. Zero and ballistic. And one thing I did as I did fix the spelling mistake, ballistic is with two L's. Last episode, you may have noticed it had only one L. So we did that. We're gonna run ballistic. Functionally, this is still the same. If I can get my hands in the right spot. <laughs> uh, and if I can type, oh my God, I think I need another coffee. It's too early in the morning for me right now. Ballistic. Um, I want it to go a little bit more northward. So let's go with 285. I want to try and see if I can get more highlands than mountains this time again. And we're going to pitch over more harder than we did last time. We're going to pitch over to 30 degrees. And let's get this thing to run. And we are off. And again, this thing's running the whole show. Well, a combination between the script and the smart parts on the boosters. As far as the smart parts go, you really actually only need one on one of these boosters because obviously all three of these radio boosters will go dry at the same time. Um, I ran into some problems with an earlier rocket where just the weight, the 50 kilograms this sensor put on, threw it off. But, I'm wondering if I still need to worry about that now that I'm starting to get more control of my rockets. That may be the control, so I should test that. Maybe I only need one smart part. Save us some money. Anyway, those guys will be recovered by stage recovery once they touch the ground. So we'll be getting some money back from them. kind of like this line and trying to get over these highlands that are back behind these mountains I don't know maybe I should have gone a little more north oh and the parachutes still haven't made those changes in the VAB we'll change that we'll change that okay and our program is done so what I want to do is actually get a, take a quick look at my new ballistics program and we'll see how this looks. Move this up, move this down. So I'm just cleaning the code up a little bit. Functionally it's all the same. So the thing to note, the description, everything here is the same. Uh, parameters, I actually don't need the declare word, so I took it out. It assumes you mean to declare it, so it's just got the word parameter there. It's a bit of a cleanup. Uh, a couple of variables have been set, declared and set over here. Same ones you saw before. I took out that silly declination calculation. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I do have to pop my parachutes. Maybe we should have put a smart part on for that. Okay, let's let's go back to here. So it's not completely automated. I have to work on that. Um, all this stuff is the same. I, I think I mentioned I took out that silly declination calculation, which wasn't necessary, a holdover from a previous version of this program. But now here's the whole program. It's going to wait two seconds. It clears the screen. You saw that. Then it's going to count down. It's going to pitch maneuver. And it's going to lock, do the pitch maneuver. And then it's going to lock to prograde. And then the program ends. So the program, you can see, is dramatically simplified. And I accomplished that through the use of functions. So if we scroll down here, the actual guts of everything is hidden down here. Uh, you declare a function easily enough. You use the word function, give the function a name. This one's the function that calculates the vertical pitch. And then this particular function is going to return a value. So it's the keyword return. And then that's the calculation. Same as last time. I'm not going to explain it. And I think you get the idea of how functions could be used to help clean your code up. So your code is uh, a little bit more easier for somebody to understand and then if they um, want to look at the guts they can go down and look at the guts these functions can also be stored in ex different KS files and then compiled together in the in a library and then that whole library loaded onto your ship I haven't gotten around to doing that yet and by the way I'm not really trying to pretend that this is a KOS tutorial it certainly isn't I'm just sort of 
briefly mentioning things as I add things in so you can get an idea of what kind of things can be accomplished. A lot more than what I'm doing, that's for sure. If you want a really nice YouTube series with KOS tutorials, the nicest one I found is by a YouTuber by the name of Cheers Kevin. I'll provide a link there up in the doob-a-doob uh, for his, uh, that playlist, but uh, he writes He's actually a really great teacher. I think he does an amazing job. And uh, he writes really, really nice code. It's actually looking at one of his videos that inspired me to clean this up a little bit. Okay, anyway, our program is done. There's no sense to all that. Oh, 1.6 credits flying high over the mountains. That one is complete. Oh, we are over the mountains right now, aren't we? Well, you know what? I do have some ability. Do I want to go more... Well, I just realized, of course, I do have some ability to affect my trajectory. Ah, in fact, I, I have a... Wow, I, oh my gosh, I should have really realized this. <laughs> okay, now I'm just spinning it around uselessly. I want it to go... Let's see if I can get this thing to point... It's in the. <laughs> Ooh, this is a little hard to control. I'm trying to see if I can get this to go a little bit more westward. Wow! The parachutes are so close to the center of mass that it just wants to spin. My original idea of putting the parachutes as close to the center mass as I did is is that this thing would be balanced and come down on its side, which was really stupid. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know it's not going to be exactly balanced. What was I even thinking about that? Okay. Nice. A little bit of sliding happening. Oh, we got, of course... Uh, we got in oh my god I, I recovered so quickly last time I forgot of course that we are collecting uh, data now sitting on the mountains so we're getting a temperature temperature scan on the mountains we're getting a radiation scan on the mountains do we not have a telemetry on the mountains there it is telemetry landed on the mountains I should have got this last time but we'll be able to get it all 8.4 science that's not gonna unlock anything clearly Maybe what I should be worried about, though, is like, for goodness sakes, I am pushing the part limits of my vessels, both in the space plane hangar and in the vehicle assembly building. I really should be upgrading this. It's 337,500 curb bucks. Uh, that's like, I have a tenth of that pretty close. So I really do have to think about contracts. So I got a ton of part building or part testing contracts that's really where I should be putting my energy. And maybe, I don't know, a little later, eventually we'll be building a plane that can get into the upper atmosphere. So we're going to start new. We're going to take a look at our contracts. We're going to get the low-lying fruit first. So low-lying fruit. Test that on uh, landed. Test the decoupler. Test that on the launch site. Orbit Kerbin. That is is not going to be done by this rocket that's for the spacely one test the airstream orbiting kerbin okay i'm not on the rocket i want to build right now uh test the spacely in a flight we're going to attempt that with the spacely one test this in a flight over kerbin it is a radially mounted drogue chute Yeah, we can probably do that. Test the, oh, extra large parachute and a flight over Kerbin. Yeah, we can probably do that. Let's take a look at the one, this Airstream one. This was get into orbit. No, we're gonna keep her simple right now. So let's see if we can build something that can do these four contracts. That is the goal. Uh, we are starting off with this day put Nick we're gonna keep this unmanned we are not going to likely get into the upper atmosphere so in the configuration 
We're going to turn this to none because that saves us a bit of mass, saves us a bit of money. So I think that's worthwhile. Uh, let's see here. We got to build something that can get to these speeds and this altitude that really shouldn't be too hard. Started with the slightly bigger Oscar D fuel can, and then I had to pick an engine. And I started off with the LV T05 Cogswell engine, which is a 0.625 meter liquid fuel engine that comes with the uncurbled mod. Uh, but I ended up switching very quickly to the LV 10 Spacely engine because of its gimbling ability that the Cogswell doesn't have. And as well, I figured this, you know, this is probably a more suitable va vessel for testing the Spacely anyway. So uh, I ended up adding that testing the Spacely contract back into things that this thing is going to attempt. I had to put on also a number of other parts that are going to be tested. The tiny TT-14 radial decoupler, the bigger TT-38- or -38K radial decoupler, and then a couple of parachutes, the M12 radial drogue chute, and then the M16 XL parachute, which is, yeah, quite a bit bigger than the rest of these parts. I ended up using a cubic strut to try and stick it on the top of the stay putnik probe where it really kind of looked out of place giant mushroom cap sitting there on the top the radial decouplers were quite a bit lighter than the rogue or the drogue parachute and so i ended up putting the two decouplers on one side and the drogue chute on the other that still had an asymmetrical mass distribution so i ended up shifting the engine just a little bit towards the heavier drogue to line up the center of thrust with the center of mass but despite all that this thing flew really badly in simulations and i was still stuck on it being about the asymmetrical mass distribution so kept tweaking with the engine but it turned out that that actually wasn't the issue the issue is asymmetrical drag from the xl parachute that's on the top uh, i tried my best to center it but you know it although it looks centered it clearly wasn't quite centered and the key that this is an issue with drag is that the tendency for this rocket to go skewing off in a different direction uh it became worse as speed went up and it's drag that's proportional to speed not so much the thrust and the mass business so that really was kind of an indication that this was more of a drag issue than a uh asymmetrical mass issue so once i removed the extra large parachute from the top this thing actually ended up flying reasonably well i ended up with something that you no know, i think i think i could end up going with this so i took a little bit of switching around of the contracts the xl contract it's it went out that pet testing contract and do that in a different vessel put the spacely one back in so this thing's going to go for four of these part testing contracts and I added it to the queue and it's going to take five and a half days to build. And you can see here that actually the Spacely one will be get built a little bit before. So that's the one we're going to see this episode is the Spacely one. In fact, that's really what I want to concentrate on. And you'll be seeing this thing fly next episode. As far as the XL shoot testing contract, I ended up sticking that on the back of the Juno using the editing tools that are built into Kerbal Construction Time. This ended up adding three days to the build, but that's okay. And this Juno is really going to be much more suitable. It can easily get to the altitudes and speed required to test this contract. So this will be pretty easy to do. But with that all done, well, I think it's time to get on to the Spacely One and see if I can put my first object into orbit. And I know last episode, I really didn't talk too much about the Spacely. I mostly let you enjoy the uh, silliness <laughs> I'm trying to get that stupid thing to fly so I'm gonna spend a little bit time talking about the rocket here all right so here it is it is sitting here stably right yeah I think it is the wobbling is just my imagination yeah it is sitting here stably. so I had to strip this down to 30 parts so you can see I've got uh, strikers on the side two radial boosters and a radial striker in the middle my first use of a stack decoupler finally the engine here is the Cogswell 
which is a it's kind of it's a 0.625 meter version of that Reliant engine, really, just a lot smaller, uh, much smaller thrust, um, but good sort of you can use it as a launch engine, an interstage engine. It's it's pretty versatile that way, but no gimbling on it. And when I get higher in the atmosphere, this thing actually is going to perform a some. It's going to be yeah, it's going to have to work a bit in space. Um, so in the higher atmosphere to help it steer, it does need some fins. It loses control without the fins, but I do have these spider engines on there. The spider engines uh, do have a good vector gimbling range. So they're on here really as sort of uh, vernier engines to help with the steering, because that's all I really have is that kind of vector steering. And then here's the good old Spacely at the top the Spacely one, I do have to run a test. If I happen to get within the right, uh, we're not gonna do that, we're not gonna do that, we're not gonna do, yes, that one maybe. If we happen to hit the right velocity at the right altitude, we'll do that. But the main objective of this is the orbit curve, and there it is. That is simple enough to understand. Go back to here. Uh, orbit curve, and I don't need to. Oh, you got to stay in orbit for 40 minutes in order to achieve. I can do that. <laughs> Just to make sure you're not cheating. Okay, so that is going there. Do I. Big. Is, is there. Oh, there's a reasonable pay. Oh, whoa, whoa, we're wobbling. Why are we wobbling? Don't you wobble. Okay, so we are going to throttle up even though we got SRBs on the bottom. Uh, I think I really do need to get this show on the road, so let's let's punch it. This wobble. You're off. No, no, you're not going that way. That was a product of that wobble. Okay, whoa, that is pitching over too much. Okay, let's let's see if it settles down. I'm not too picky about the inclination. Roughly eastward is fine by me, and I think we're pitching over okay. We're going to lose those radial SRBs. No parachutes on anything. Nothing's going to get recovered because I couldn't spare the parts. Boom, there goes that. Okay, I am pitching over a little bit too quickly, so let's get that back under. Whoa. I should have turned down the probably still can but I don't want to screw around. Oh, I'm not paying any attention to my altitude and my speed's not enough. No, I'm over. So this that this contract won't get performed. That's okay. Let's get rid of you. We're only interested in the orbit curve and I was sort of dubious on that one anyway. All right. Boom, there we got that. We'll keep an eye on our apoapsis. Oh my gosh, this is a nice, nice ascent, in my humble, humble opinion. My first use in-game of liquid fuel engines outside of simulation mode. Looking good. for an apple lapse is around 75 kilometers 65 all right happy with that so I have 204 which quite actually a lot of Delta V in this thing might find uses in the future for other things. Okay, uh, let's time warp. Now I don't have the ability to do maneuver nodes and I don't know when, I don't have a time to, that's locked. I guess that comes up with upgrades to the tracking station. So I'm going to have to go into map view. I'm going to have to eyeball this just a little bit. Actually, let's fix this stage and get this engine right in there we go. OK, 
Okay, let's see where we're at. So here comes my apoapsis. So I'm just going to have to kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of, uh, there we are, we're in space, time warping, oh, I can I have to do this by eyeball. Okay, let's, uh, we'll point down a little bit. Oh, I can't point down, of course, so let's give ourselves a little bit. Don't have, I'm so used to reaction wheels, so here we go. Point down, and I'm just watching my apoapsis and periapsis numbers. And steering at the same time, because you cannot obviously lock. It's looking good. More thrust. stage should be done any moment there it goes okay now it's just a little spacely we'll pitch down my apoapsis is getting high it really doesn't matter too much honestly must be past my apoapsis it's going so high just burn, 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 burn. I got a lot of fuel. I overbuilt this because I knew this was going to get a little bit. You know what? Ah. No, I can't do this. I'm going to be out of the atmosphere. Burn. You idiot stick. I let it get too far. Go. Go, 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 go. I got to get this. Ah. Oh, my golly. <laughs> I wasn't watching this. I am. Our periapsis is high enough. Okay, we're going to let this tumble for a bit. <laughs> I got my apoapsis all the way up to almost a thousand kilometers. This will carry through here. <laughs> okay, we will be coming out though. I got my periapsis high enough. We'll be coming out of the atmosphere once again. Uh, but I, a tiny bit of fuel left, 84 meters per second. But once we're up around Apoapsis, we should be able to easily control this. Now, data. I did collect some data. We got the light in space, low, and even some re-entry stuff. Oh, and I got a up. Where's my antenna? Extend that antenna and we should start transmitting now. I do have to pay attention to electricity. There's supposed to be a way. Yeah, I know I'm in shadow. There's supposed to be a way to automate some stuff. So the only one I got. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's play around with this while this thing is making its way up to Apoapsis. Uh, there is some sort of automations you can do here. Okay, that's okay. That's info. Nice. Automation. Ten is extended. Sensor light is 100% done. So I mean, I've okay. Log. Oh, stuff that's happened. Configure. Receive a message when electric charge is low. Okay, so these are just warnings. Group. None. Okay. I'll play around with this a little bit. Um, but I think... Oh, no, we are... We've collected... I think we've collected the data we're just transmitting. Are we doing okay for electricity? There are solar panels on this thing. Clearly, right now, we are in the dark. But I think it has done the entire light experiment, but we are going to get into high space, so that's more light experiment. All right, let's uh, time warp. This isn't using nearly as much, like, oops, as much electricity as I was worried it would. Okay, we are done. We have, I think, done all of the light experiment we can 
in um, low space. So we're up to high space now. There we go. Collecting high space light telemetry and also maybe once in all those solar panels are not very well exposed. <laughs> A little bit of exposure. I, I don't want to burn any more fuel to try and reorient this vessel. I won't be able to stop the spin anyway. So, what's the point? Okay. There's supposed to be some sort of automation feature. So you can sit there and say, you know, if you're not in the sun, don't transmit and things like that to try and save electricity. But, um... Oh, that is space high. I think then this thing is completely... Done. So we're going to turn that light experiment off. Hopefully that's same. We might as well disengage this antenna. Uh, um, give me how much radiation we're getting too. A viewer was mentioning to me as well, speaking of radiation, crossing the radiation belts. I don't know how high the radiation belts are out this way, but mentioned if you go into a polar orbit, of course the radiation belts come in towards the pole, so you actually, if you put yourself in a polar orbit, that will get you crossing the radiation belt, so I could just do that. Well, not that it's as trivial as that is by what I'm saying. I hate the fact that these solar panels are, oh wait, no. Solar panels are not enough. Gotta pay attention. I don't. Okay. 990 is my apoapsis, so I'm okay. The, oh no, I am charging up. Okay. So the solar panels are enough. Good, good, good. I always get the negatives mixed up. Okay, I want to slow down here. What I think I will do is not wait till I'm exactly at periapsis or apoapsis. I'll get kind of close. But I'm going to take advantage of the spinning, and when it spins close to the prograde vector, we'll start up our engine. We'll get our, we'll get ourselves out of uh, get our periapsis out of the atmosphere, and that should start. That should be an orbit. Okay, we are. What do we got to get? Nine ninety. Come on, we can go higher. Nine hundred ninety. Okay. Let's go two more times around. Okay, let's get ourselves ready. This doesn't have to be super precise. It ain't rocket science. <laughs> that was terrible. Don't need a lot. Okay, let's push it. Oh, I'm having trouble just... Oh, okay, you know what? That's it. Let's just let this go. We are in an orbit. And we got to wait 40 minutes. But that will click away in the background. So that... We'll see that pop up next episode for sure. <laughs> Also next episode, I really got to start banging off contracts, making some money, working towards upgrading that VAB. That's all going to have to be for the future. And in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.